これがレクイオだジョルノ・ジョバーナお前には死んだことを後悔する時間をも与えん何を喋っているんだ<笑> When it comes to the different villains we see all throughout JoJo, none of them are more confusing than the main antagonist of Part 5, Diablo. Whether it's how his stand works, what his intentions are, or just his existence in general, there's a lot of factors that lead to him being probably the most confusing character in all of JoJo, but also one of the most intriguing characters to try to figure out. Anyone who's seen or read Part 5 will know that understanding any aspect of Diablo will lead you down a dark path of multiple YouTube videos, which is probably how you ended up here. So let's actually take a look at this walking contradiction contradiction and see whether some things about him are just misunderstood or just how far some of these contradictions may go. <clears throat> Anyways, before we start, I'm going to give a quick spoiler warning for part 5 in case that wasn't obvious enough, just to be fair. Now, when talking about Diablo, I always find myself coming back to this one question, and that is, did he deserve it? Now, to truly understand this question, it'll probably be best to put in perspective just how brutal his death actually was. To put simply, he just dies over and over and over again. That much can be seen in the anime, but this happens to him forever. Imagine it like we have a timeline of events that is the main Jojo universe. Diablo is no longer in this timeline and it's almost like he's in this dimension outside of the timeline. Meaning, no matter what happens in this main Jojo timeline, Diablo will continue to die over and over. The universe in the main Jojo timeline could be erased, reset, recreated, continue as is, get better, get worse. None of it would in any way affect Diablo as he's basically in this space outside of time. I'm not sure about you guys, but I would say that maybe that kind of fate wasn't all that deserved. Thinking about it, yeah, Diablo killed some of the main cast, started a mafia, and so on, but that kind of punishment might be a tad too much. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it, but regardless about how anyone feels about it, it might have been the only way he could have been defeated. There's a thread on Twitter that posted Araki's answers to a Q&A that he did at a convention, and one of those answers might help give us some insight on how he thought about Diablo's death. He simply explained that Diablo had the right death and that he doesn't believe he was too cruel, despite what fans might have thought. Now, this idea is pretty interesting, because saying that his death was the right one presents an interesting idea. Now, you could just say I'm looking a bit too deep into a probably offhanded comment that was then summarized through another third-party source, but then I would have to say, yeah, probably, but it doesn't matter. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So, thinking about Diablo being defeated this way as the right way means that there really was no other way. If Diablo was defeated in the same fashion as one of the previous villains the gang went up against, there's a possibility that it just destroys his character. Like if he got 7 page Muda like Chocolata, you'd probably be watching it and thinking in the back of your head, why didn't he just skip past it? It would also feel pretty similar to all the other villains fights in the parts, making it not a special. So narratively, it was right for him to be defeated this way, as it leaves a lasting impression on the audience, and it also doesn't feel as if a character all of a sudden gets short changed for the sake of the plot. Looking at it in-universe brings you to the same conclusion as well. If Diablo's stand allows him to see into the future and skip any events within that time, anything anyone does would simply be skipped over. So placing him in a constant loop where it doesn't matter whether he skips it or not, as it will happen over and over, is pretty much the only way to defeat him, as cruel as it may be. Basically, his punishment is specifically catered to him and him only. Beyond this being the only way to defeat him, him not being able to die also seems to serve as punishment for him trying to control fate. So you could even theorize that maybe he doesn't die over and over forever, only just as many times as he tried to control fate. Fan theory aside, this idea that his inability to die acts as a punishment for trying to control fate is something we'll get back to later, as it shows how he essentially got what he wanted in the end. To understand what I mean, let's actually take a look at the boss man himself or himself. I think Risotto is able to perfectly describe not just Dopio, but the boss as well in a single sentence. <laughs> Diablo doesn't want anyone to know who he is, but he also created a criminal empire and placed himself and an alternate version of himself at the top two levels, which makes it to where everyone needs to at least be aware of who the boss is to keep them in line. But then also, what's the deal with Trisha's mom? It's not like he didn't know about her until just now. She was alive for like 50 
15 years before issues for Diablo started to arise because of her death. He gave her a fake name, but it was a fake name that people were aware was tied to the boss. So if she ever started looking for him, people would be aware, which is exactly the reason why Trish joined the gang. So if he's trying to keep himself hidden, why did he create an entire mafia under his command, but also have a living, breathing link to him freely walking around? Maybe it was Dopio who wanted to be with her, but it doesn't seem like it as why would he give a fake name then? But also speaking of Dopio, if you have him as a second in command, then anyone who would want to find the boss would have to go through him. But if they have Dopio, then they would also have the boss, which is also exactly what happened. So why does Trish exist if he knew her mom was a direct link? Or why even start a mafia if you just want to not exist? Wasn't that the whole point of destroying his hometown? All these questions I brought up are just to show that almost none of what he desires makes any sense and are all contradictory to each other. It's like he wants his cake and to eat it, but also not eat it too. It's just contradictory. But this is also completely in line with his character though. If we take a look back at Diablo's character with all this in mind, from the very beginning, it's a bit more obvious what he wants. Diablo was born to a woman in prison in an all-woman's prison who was already two years into her 10-year sentence in the prison. She stated that the father of the child died two years ago, and given that it's an all-woman's prison, there were no men stationed anywhere on the island. Plus, an offhanded comment made by one of the guards was that the woman didn't even look pregnant earlier that day. So all this coming together to form the idea that Diablo shouldn't exist. With all the many different factors that all add up to making his birth situation all the more impossible, it makes the point that he wasn't meant to exist, yet he does. And that's where his contradictions begin to make sense. Diablo wants to exist. If you look at his actions with this idea in mind, they begin to make sense. He established a mafia empire to leave an indisputable mark on the world that not only did he exist in it, but he had control of it. We can tell this was Diablo's doing as it would make no sense for Dopio to form this entire mafia, then make himself second in command as he seemed more content with his life. Diablo created an empire that not only left a mark on the world, but also gave Dopio a purpose to fulfill in it as well. And this is only further supported by their stands. A big part of a stand's power and design is its relation to its user. A stand's design and ability mainly come from the personality of the user. This is more obviously seen through someone like Fugo, whose stand reflects its user's anger issues. The more unstable parts of Fugo's personality, such as his previously mentioned anger issues, but also things such as his need to clean everything or on full display with his stand Purple Haze, who's seen frothing at the mouth in anger, but also constantly cleaning that drool and mumbling to itself. Its virus ability attacks anything and anyone indiscriminately, much like how in a fit of rage you may say or do something to anyone even if they're trying to help you. This is no different for Diablo and Dopio. Diablo and Dopio both have a stand, but as they are two beings in the same body, so are their stands. Epitaph and King Crimson are one and the same stand, but both individually represent the different aspects and personalities of Diablo and Dopio. Epitaph represents Diablo while King Crimson represents Dopio. That might sound like it should be the other way around, especially since in the anime you see Dopio primarily using Epitaph, but let me explain. Dopio is the main personality. Dopio is the one in control of the body most of the time, while Diablo only takes a controller every once in a while. While it's never explicitly explained whether Diablo can control the body whenever and for however long he wants or not, from all the context clues like the baby's eyes mainly being Dopio's or their appearance and flashbacks being more similar to Dopio's appearance, but also real life studies indicating that those affected by DID may be unaware of other personalities, much like Dopio, I'm not a medical professional, don't quote me, I think it would be fair to say that Diablo is the secondary personality, much like Epitaph is the substand to King Crimson. Even if you don't agree with that reasoning, Epitaph's ability is to look into the future and foresee what is coming. This ability allows the user to plan for what is going to happen in those 10 seconds and allows them to act around what is to happen. This is Diablo looking out for his dear Dopio. As if he's in trouble, they both are. It also just fits Diablo's personality, as he's the mastermind coming up with the plans and the ideas to carry out those plans, while Dopio is the one who carries them out. Thus bringing us back to this idea that King Crimson is Dopio Stan as it acts as the main body and is the one that has to do the work to carry out the plans, and King Crimson's ability to skip time allows any mess ups on Dopio's end to be erased. Since King Crimson's ability acts as a way to not undo or redo, but as a way to erase any mistakes, Diablo is erasing something fundamental to existing, making mistakes.
mistakes. Failure and success go hand in hand. You can't know one without the other. You won't know failure until you've succeeded and you won't know success until you have failed. Erasing one of these is equivalent to erasing all bad from good. Can people truly be good if they don't have the capacity for anything else? Or would they be something entirely different? Diablo erasing those failures erases the entire aspect of existing, resulting in him never truly being able to exist and only shortening the time he has to exist. That being said, I want to go back to a point I made earlier in the video that Diablo's inability to die acts as a punishment for trying to control fate. King Crimson's ability allows for fate to happen, but for Diablo to be unaffected by it. This ability effectively allowed him to control his own fate in some degree, as if an outcome wasn't favorable, he can just simply make it to where he's not affected by it. Since Diablo wanted to control his fate and erase himself from it, he, in the end, got what he wanted by dying over and over, never truly being able to meet his fated end as he was erased from it. ボス。完全に僕たちの勝ちだ。でも寂しいよ。またいつものように電話ください。ボス。<笑> Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Also, follow me on Twitter, it's the easiest way to keep up with whatever I got going on. And also, also, I live stream both on this channel and my Twitch channel pretty frequently, so if you see me live, hop in chat, say hi, I'd love to have you. There's also a playlist of my previous streams if you missed one or just want to have some weird background noise. Anyways, it's a JoJo video, so you already know I gotta say a big thanks to G for helping out with this video. Honestly, this video started out with me saying, man, I I want to talk about Diavolo, but there's nothing to talk about except for what happened with G.E.R. And then talking with G for like two hours about Diavolo's character. But man, first I make a video pretty much talking about how Dio wanted to lose, then a video about Kira not wanting to live a quiet life, now a video about Diavolo wanting to exist. What's next? A video about how Pucci hates Dio? Wait a minute. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, watch the anime, read the manga, I'll see you in the next one. このディアボロは一度的地を乗り越えてきた帝王なのだ。生きりなってスタフな口を聞いてんじゃないぞ。ジャルノジョバーラ。お前には死んだことを後悔する時間をも与え。キングクリムゾン。我以外のすべての時間